Exams are cancelled, school is closed, it's the holidays. So why should we be doing maths? Well, first thing, let me ask you a puzzle. So here, I've got a box full of oranges. You can see I've got the first layer filled in with oranges. And if I wanted to fit as many oranges as possible, where should I put the second layer of oranges? I could put them directly on top of the first layer, like this. Or... I could put them in the dimples of the first layer, like this. Which way do you think would get me the most oranges in the box? It's not as easy as it seems. So this was a question posed by Kepler and he said, how do I get the most oranges in the box? And he kind of thought that it might be the second way, putting it in the dimples. And anyone who ever worked in a fruit shop was kind of like, well, duh. If you see fruit the way it arranges itself, it's going to go into those dimples. But as a mathematician, he had to prove it. Not just have an idea, not just test it, really mathematically prove that there is no other way that definitely putting it in the dimples is the right way to do it. 300 years later, still no proof. Oh my gosh, mathematicians, what are you doing? So then fancy hat wearing man Hilbert, one of my favorite mathematicians, he said, yeah, we really should get to solving that. I'm gonna put it on my list of things to do. 100 years later. Hey, success, finally, Tom Hale managed to do it. He proved it completely. It's definitely 100% Putting the oranges in the dimples, that is the way that you will get the most oranges in the box. And we know for sure, no matter how big the box is, no matter how big or small the oranges are, if you want to put spherical objects inside a box, the way that you can get the most in there is by putting them in the dimples of the layer below. Well done, mathematicians, said everyone. But still nobody really cared. And then Marina Vyazovska came along and said, oh, that's really cute, but could you do it in eight dimensions? And here's what that looks like. And again, everyone goes, well done, mathematicians. Why though? Well, because of that silly little puzzle to do with the oranges, and then because we got proof of that, then used that proof to get proof in eight dimensions, which I don't know, we, I can't even imagine things in eight dimensions. We now have better telecommunications with space. If we're sending data to space and some of it gets lost along the way, that maths will be used to more accurately reconstruct the data and make sure all of the information gets there. And just think for a second, Kepler was alive in 1611. There is no way he could have imagined that his puzzle, this little idea that he had, could possibly have been used for telecommunications with space. And that is my number one favorite thing about maths. Pure maths solves problems that haven't even been invented yet. And this isn't even a fluke for mathematicians. We have a good track record, like fancy hat wearing man Hilbert. Yeah, look at this beautiful Hilbert curve. Ooh, It's the longest possible non-repeating curve in a given grid. It's pretty cool. He just wanted to fill space with some curves. We're all looking for ways to fill some time right now. And he invented that more than a hundred years ago. And now it's the way that internet routers ping to each other because it will hit every single point on the grid. The ultimate way to win snake. Imaginary numbers invented in the 16th century. There was a problem that mathematicians couldn't solve and they just said, well, imagine if we could solve it. Let's invent a number that would do that. How could that possibly have any bearing on the real world? It's just made up. But people use it in electrical, nuclear, and aerospace engineering. This bad boy here, pretty picture, it's a Penrose tiling. It's an aperiodic tiling, so it doesn't ever repeat globally. You get little local repeating, but no global repeating. It was an open question up until the 60s. Could it be done with just two tiles? The answer, yes. Well done, mathematicians. Golf clap, golf clap. But in 2013, the Nobel Prize for Chemistry was awarded for discovering that the atomic structure of aluminium alloy atoms is a Penrose tiling. We don't have everything figured out though. Mathematicians are good, but not that good. Knot theory, for example, we don't know a lot about knots. And one of the open questions that we have that you could be working on right now, where should you snip a knot so that it untangles? 
interesting question, yeah. But then as Matt Parker points out in his book, just look at the shape of bacterial DNA. Imagine if we could figure out the best way to snip them so that they were just rendered useless. So even if you think you're just working on a fun little puzzle or it's something silly, that is how mathematical discoveries get done. It's a mixture of hard work, it's a mixture of trying things for fun, and you have no idea what the maths that you might discover, how silly or trivial it might seem at the time, could be used in 10, 15, 100 years time. The more people we have doing maths, the more amazing, weird discoveries we could have, and who knows how they might be used. I just love maths.